Ampere is everywhere at the moment. Let's just face it, that is the talk of the town because until AMD's new stuff comes out, mm, it's gonna be just rumor on the AMD side. But check this out, there's even more rumors on the Nvidia side. So I know a lot of people out there love to have gaming laptops. It's, you know, the market for gaming laptops is just grown exponentially over the last few years. And there's a brand new rumor that's come out that we're going to see a mobile version of the GA104. So let's talk tech. The GeForce RTX 3070 will hit the shelves on October 15th, and we all know this utilizes the GA104 silicon, like all the other dyes have been so far. Now, the GA104 most likely will be manufactured with Samsung's 8N NVIDIA process node. The exact number of streaming multiprocessors is unknown, but rumors suggest 48 of them, which would be a total of 6,144 CUDA cores, 48 RT cores, and 192 Tensor cores in total that are available. Now, the GeForce RTX 3070 itself is going to be equipped with 5,888 CUDA cores, so it's obvious that the graphics card isn't leveraging the full ability of the die, which would open the doorway for a potential GeForce RTX 37 Super or a GeForce RTX 37 Ti in the near future. The GA104 GN20-E5 die from the leaked photograph is reportedly a qualification sample that corresponds to the mobile version of the GeForce RTX 3070. Now even though Nvidia hasn't announced Ampere for mobile devices yet, we're really uncertain if the chipmaker will enable the same number of SMs on the GeForce RTX 37 mobile, but for now, we can only dream that all the 5,888 CUDA cores from the desktop variant will make their way onto the mobile variant. The leaked GA104 silicone looks as if it's surrounded by eight SK Hynix H56C8 H24 Air GDDR6 memory chips. So the GeForce RTX 37 Mobile should launch with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 total memory, which also suggests a 256-bit memory interface. Something that's really interesting, however, is that the chips don't show up on SK Hynix's website. However, the original poster of the rumor claims that these chips draw 1.2 volts. Therefore, we kind of suspect that the chips could be the low voltage versions of the same chip. So like I said at the beginning of the video, a mobile variant of the GA104 being put into a laptop means a lot of power. Now, whether it's going to have the full amount, 5,888 CUDA cores and all that in the laptop version, I'm not quite sure. But personally, I own a previous generation um, NVIDIA laptop and it's really nice. It's got an RTX 2080 in it. It's got the great G-Sync monitor. I mean, I love that thing. and. Portable gaming laptops have literally overtaken the market. If you go back, you know, 10 or 15 years, you know, desktops were selling like crazy. They were selling like crazy, selling like crazy. And uh, a long time ago, Bill Gates made a thing that he hoped at one time that everybody would have a computer in their house. Well, I think we will get one uh, in every office uh, and in every home. That was our original vision. To do that, we're gonna to have to make them very familiar. Well, guess what, Wild Bill? You have uh, pretty much won because I really don't know anybody at all who's involved in a normal life who doesn't have a computer. I know some people that live on the fringe, like you know, they're barely holding on to their life and they don't have a computer, but most people who have a stable life and everything have a computer. So that market is pretty much very saturated. But the young people of today especially, they wanna have something they can take on the go. Now. If these new laptops will be low powered, which we're hoping you know, so battery life lasts a long time, and they're super powerful for playing games, and you can take it wherever you go and hook up an external monitor, you know, so pretty much no matter where you go, if your friend's got a monitor, you can be up in gaming and having a lot of fun like that. That's going to be really interesting. Like I said, I really like my NVIDIA laptop. I think it's a very nice laptop. It plays games absolutely great. Everything is smooth as butter. 
obviously these are going to have more powerful CPUs in them, more powerful GPUs in them. Like I said, I hope battery life is going to be longer because that's something that to me is very important these days, you know, because it's portable. I mean, hey, it should have long battery life. I mean, let's just say that you want to go hiking to, you know, the top of Mount Everest. And for some reason, you're a crazy gamer and you want to be the first guy ever in the world to go and play Doom on the top of Mount Everest. So if somebody wants to do that, make sure you mention me if you take that idea from me, please. I appreciate that. <laughs> I wish I could do it. Maybe somebody could just fly me and then push my chubby ass out of the plane and, you know, off I'll go under the top of Mount Everest to freeze freeze my my, my, my booty off, but have my, my gaming laptop. Great video, right? And then, you know, I, 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 I die on the mountainside of freezing to death and get probably eaten by a polar bear or something. I don't know. They, they didn't go that high, but something would probably just eat me. But... That's it, folks. What do you guys think? I mean, we all know that gaming is a huge industry. Gaming laptops, big industry. Do you guys think that you would be really excited to get a laptop, especially if it was affordable with an RTX, you know, 37 mobile variant, especially if it was just as powerful as the desktop model? Because honestly, the laptops that came out near the end of the RTX 20 series thing, they were very powerful and there were a lot of laptops out there that had the full blown desktop power inside that laptop. And those, you know, those gaming laptops play games badass. They just did. So if they're going to have more laptops like that with even more power, more stuff, I'm excited about it. I'm not going to replace my laptop though, just because I like mine and it's fine for me. If I want to play some really super crazy first person shooter game and have everything bells and whistles, I'll come home and play with my, you know, RTX 3080 and have fun with it. But beyond that, you know, I think for a lot of people out there, especially people who are buying a new laptop, this will be a pretty cool thing. So like usual, let me know what you guys think. Obviously, NVIDIA has many more cards up their sleeve. They're just going to wait and see what happens with the AMD launch. And as soon as AMD launches their cards, like I said before, NVIDIA is just going to come in and release all kinds of cards that will beat it by just a wee bit because that's what they do. <laughs> it's just the game, my friends. That's just it. So let me know. Are you excited for a laptop with an RTX 3070? Ah! I think some of you will be. Some of you be like, eh, I don't care. I want an AMD laptop, but that's on you. So peace out. Hey, if you like my videos, hey, please subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell, which is notifications, and you'll see more of my videos here on the channel. We've got interesting stuff always coming up. Um, I actually held back on my initial testing of the RTX you know, 2080 Super and the 2070 Super against the RTX 3080. So I actually have those results coming out with more games. We've had time to actually play with it. There's a better driver out. So all in all, I think it was better just to wait instead of just trying to do it all on launch day. So peace out. Also, if you want to support the channel, it's really easy. Try Amazon Prime for free. I have a link down there. You can watch movies, get stuff shipped to you for free for 30 days. Doesn't cost you anything and helps keep Tech of Tomorrow around. So see you guys back in the channel for more tech. Ah!